Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you Presto Photo's brand new workflow that allows you to integrate Adobe Lightroom into your photo book making process. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. So as I said in the intro, this new workflow allows you to use your Adobe Lightroom photo gallery or library to create photo books. And the reason why this is very important is because I think this is the first app that allows you to use pictures directly from the Adobe Lightroom gallery. I made a video before which was comparing the different um, cloud library systems like the Apple Photos library, the Adobe Lightroom library and the Google Photos library. And what I said in that video was that Adobe Lightroom is the only library that photo book editors cannot get access to. So it's the hardest one to use if you want to create photo books and uh, use your photos from the library. Presto Photo managed to create this connection between the two apps. Now, as you can see on the screen now, there are two different workflows. One is the legacy book workflow, which you have to use in Lightroom Classic and you export your um, photo book project as a PDF and upload it to the Presto Photo website. The second one is the Presto Book Workflow, which allows you to use the library directly in Apple Photos through the Presto Photo extension. That sounds a little bit complicated, but to simplify it, in this video, I'm going to be talking to the MacBook users. And in the next video, I'm going to show you the legacy book workflow, which can be used by Mac or PC users as well. If you've never used Presto Photo before, they've got lots of photo book options on their website and they became very popular when they started substituting the Apple photo books uh, as they went out of print a few years ago. And they have many different ways of creating photo books. You can create a photo book by uploading a PDF from Adobe InDesign. You can create a photo book on their website or you can use their extension for Apple photos. So this workflow that I'm talking about is going to allow you to connect to the Adobe Lightroom gallery through Apple Photos and you can use the photos to create your photo book there. In order to do this, you have to download the latest version of the app from the Apple Store. And this app not only allows you to use the Adobe Lightroom gallery, it also comes with lots of new updates such as advanced template styling like borders, drop shadows and image rotation, extended color picker to include uh, legacy Apple book colors, 22 templates, um, Apple comparable added to the collection, including square templates for the first time, performance and stability improvements, new calendar image placement, applying holidays and birthdays to calendars and so on. So lots of new goodies in the app. But now let's dive in and let me show you how you can connect to Adobe Lightroom. So once you downloaded the app, make sure to start it before going into Apple Photos. And now you can start your Apple Photos app. And here all you have to do is come to File, Create, Book and select Presto Photo. Let's just select a landscape book, 13 by 11. And now you can see all the available templates you can choose from. Let's choose something very simple just for demonstration sake. So let's go with uh, this one here. And then you can obviously see these tick boxes at the top, which is smart placement, auto flow, and images per page. I've talked about these in my previous video, but let me just quickly uh, say again what they mean. So if you pre-select your photos that you want to create your photo book from, then you can create the photo book automatically and let the app use uh, AI to create the book for you. And you have to basically select how many pages you want the book to be, how many photos would you like on average on the pages, and the auto flow is going to place your photos automatically onto the pages and the smart placement. Make sure that all your pictures look the best in the photo boxes. So let's select template. In order to connect to Adobe Lightroom, we have to come here to the bottom where you see photos and click on the plus button and click on the Lightroom cloud. It's going to ask you to sign in. So make sure you sign into your account, which has your cloud pictures and success. And now you will see all my Lightroom cloud albums load up here and I can select photos from any of my albums. So that's, that's how easy it is to connect to the Lightroom um, gallery. The best thing about this connection is that 
If you make any changes to any of your photos in Adobe Lightroom, it's going to automatically update your photos in the Apple Photos extension as well. So you don't have to re-export and import your pictures every single time you make changes to your photos. This obviously applies to Apple Photos because it's a cloud service, but now you can, you can have the same convenience with Adobe Lightroom as well. Now this connects to your cloud. And if you are using the classic service, you can still do this, but there's an extra couple of steps to do before you can get your pictures into the Apple extension. So first I want to show you how this works inside the app. And then after that, I'm going to show you in a couple of steps how to add photos from Lightroom Classic into the uh, Presto Photo extension. So let's start editing these photos. Let's pick an album. Let's pick Australia here. And here are the pages of my book. Now, if I come here and I want to drag some photos into the template, then all I have to do is get my pictures and drag them. Now, there are a couple of little details here that you might want to know, which are really cool, I think. The first one is you can see the resolution of the photo inside the editor. So if I click on one of these photos, I can see here 1011 DPI. And although this might not mean a lot to all of you, but many of you who are into photography and editing, you know that resolution can be very tricky to guess sometimes because most photo book editors just give you a smiley face or a sad face and you don't actually know how bad that photo is. In Presto Photo, you get a very specific uh, indicator of how good your photo is. And as a rule of thumb, 300 DPI is what is suggested for a minimum printout quality. But as I said in my previous videos, if it's slightly under like 280 or 250, your picture is still going to look quite good in print. So just because it doesn't reach the 300 magic number, it doesn't mean that you can't use it in your photo books. And in Presto Photo, you can easily see what's that acceptable DPI where your photo is going to print well. Now, if uh, I'm making this photo much bigger, obviously the DPI is going to decrease. So it's a dynamic number, meaning that as soon as you change the shape or the size of your photo, or if you start zooming in, then the DPI is going to decrease because your photo is getting bigger. So for example, if I click on this photo and I use this zoom button here to zoom in, you can see the DPI is decreasing down now all the way to 134. So I think this is one of the nicest features that's really missing from most photo book editors. Some of the more pro editors have this feature, but not too many of them. The second thing you'll see is that in the bottom here, next to the little cloud, you see a number and that shows you on which page number this photo is added. So if I go to the next page and I add this photo here, then it's going to show number three. And again, that's a very handy feature when you're editing your book and you're like, um, have I used this photo already? And then you see exactly where it's been used. Now in the standard format here, as you can see, I can't move any of my boxes. So the template is quite static. And this is very good if you're not very confident in moving boxes and you don't want to spoil the layout. But if you want a little bit more freedom and flexibility, you can click on the edit layout here in the top and then you have full control over how your uh, photo boxes look, where you want to put your text, everything is movable and changeable. And then when you're done, you can click on the done button. If you want to add anything more to this uh, layout, you can click on the plus and you can add an image, you can add titles, you can add subtitles, you can add caption, and you can add paragraph. Now, if I come back to my previous page with the three photos and I want a different template, but I don't want to create it myself, I can come here to the bottom where it says images and click on templates. And here, the first thing you can select is the theme. So if you want to stick to one theme or you can go to all, and that's going to show you all the available options from every single theme. The second thing you need to select is how many photos you want to see on that specific template. You can select multiple numbers or you can just select one. And then you've got here with text, cover or show all. And now you can see lots of templates which have text on it. And you can see some other ones which have text and also photos. So let's take the text off and let's select something like this. And then you can see 
my template automatically changed. In the top left corner, you've got again a few buttons here. The first one is adding new pages. You can add a single page, you can add a spread, or you can add multiple pages. The minus button is going to delete the page where you are currently in the editor. And this one is going to duplicate a page. If you really like the layout, then you don't need to look for it again. You can just duplicate it. In this pages organizer, you can obviously move the pages so you can reorganize them and drag and drop them where you want them so you don't have to worry about doing your photo book from beginning to end. You can just later on shuffle your pages. And in the bottom right corner here, you've got some more pro tools like hiding the crop lines, uh, the rulers, and you can select your measurements in inches, centimeters, or points. So lots of very handy tools. And of course your zoom button if you want to see more detail on your page. This one is your background color. Flip the layout horizontally, flip the layout vertically. And this little magic stick is an auto select and it selects the best template based on the page pictures. If you're not happy with the theme you chose, then you can come to browse templates and again, look through the templates again, change the flow for the images, the settings for your book, and you can reflow the entire book with one click. Now, let me show you in two quick steps how you can get your photos from Lightroom Classic if you prefer to use that instead of Lightroom CC. So if you want to use photos from Lightroom Classic, you have to come to Lightroom Classic. And here I've got some photos and let's assume I want to use these in my photo book. So I have to select all my photos and I have to create a collection from these photos or an album that's going to show up in my cloud catalog. So once I selected all my photos, I'm going to come to library and new collection. Here I'm going to name this Lightroom Classic just so I can find it easily and include selected photos and sync with Lightroom. This is very important. If you don't click on sync with Lightroom, it's not going to show up in the cloud catalog. And when it's synced, if I come now to my Apple extension and I click on my Lightroom cloud, I should see an album named Lightroom Classic and it's here. And now I can see my photos in Lightroom Classic. Now, as you can see, the DPI is a little bit lower for this photo than the other ones. And the reason for that is when you upload photos into the cloud from Lightroom Classic, they have a maximum resolution of, I think, 2,500 pixels by 2,500 pixels, which is not bad, but it's not the full resolution. In the case of this small photo, it really doesn't matter. But if you want to use this picture as a full bleed, full page photo, then the resolution might go under 300 DPI. We have to come back to Lightroom Classic, click on the collection where the photos are, click on any of the photos, click on show in finder to find the original files. And we have to put these files back manually into Lightroom CC. So select all of them, come to Lightroom CC and just drag them in. Click on add 11 photos. And now if I go back to my Apple Photos extension, the files are going to show up as a full resolution image. And if I come back to Apple Photos, now you can see that the photo updated and it shows up as 1100 DPI. So this was the workaround from Lightroom Classic. It's not quite as easy as with Lightroom CC, but it's still possible to use the photos. This was my short walkthrough in the new Adobe Lightroom integration of Presto Photo. I think it's amazing and I am a Lightroom user myself. I migrated my entire photo library from Apple Photos into Lightroom a couple of years ago. And every time I create a photo book, I always have to export all my pictures and import them into the photo book editor. And this would definitely solve that problem. You can just integrate it and use your gallery from Lightroom. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, subscribe for more.